My name's Angelo and welcome to We Want Picks. Let's talk about UFC Vegas 66. It was the last fight card of the year. I think the projections were that 11 of the 13 fights were supposed to go to a decision, but we had some solid finishes, a wild come from behind victory, and a less than stellar main event. Let's jump in, but before we do, I'm giving away $1,000. The only thing that needs to happen is we need to hit 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. That's only 500 more, I think. We still have a couple of weeks to go. We're going to do our call-in live stream shows. We still have time. All you need to do is subscribe to We Want Picks, subscribe to our other channel, Picks Nation, and comment on the giveaway video. We're going to use a random comment grabber picker thing online, and then whoever's comment it grabs is going to get $1,000 free to enter. It'll take you all of two freaking minutes. Go ahead and do that now. All the links to do that are in the description. And last night wasn't the best for most people. I made money. I am up 2.6 units. I somehow scraped by. I got that Hoffa Garcia um, at one, minus 120, I think. So almost even money there. I did three units on Renat. I had that takedown bet on Kakramanov. So I absolutely... Closed out this year on a wild, wild win streak. Jacob's bets were a little bit of a bloodbath, but he was up so many units, he went crazy. If you watch our betting breakdown, I told you, this is not the week to spend your money. Keep your money, go into the holidays with all the money we've given you. But not everybody listens to that advice. I did. We've given you over 50 units of net profit in the last six events. 50 units. I did Jacob's calculations a little weird. I'm probably underselling that because I forgot one of his bets was a uh, inside the distance decision, no action. So that was a refund. But anyway, we've given you more than 50 units of net profit. So do all the things. But let's talk about the fights. The easiest pick on the card was Renat. The easiest pick on the card. Brian Battle was stepping up on short notice and fighting the toughest opponent he's ever had to fight it, it didn't make sense he should not have taken that fight this is a tough tough guy with a full camp let alone on short notice or not did what we all thought he would do we got the takedowns beat the crap out of him controlled him brian battle is improving quickly brian battle is in phenomenal shape but he's not ready for this next level especially this next level of like non-stop relentless wrestlers he tried to grapple he, you know he threatened with a few random submissions but they absolutely went nowhere and somebody as well trained and well you know well rounded in the grappling and the wrestling department absolutely was gonna do this e easiest pick on the card frankly and the only reason Renat wasn't in the safety parlay is I build those early and Renat wasn't on the slate until Sunday I think and I already had the safety parlay up I already put money on it so I had to leave it where it was. But the safety parlay absolutely should have been Renat and Amir Albazi. Anyway, easiest pick on the card. Brian Battle will be back. He'll continue to improve. He works harder than probably anybody in that division. Thank God they didn't stop this fight. This is one of the bloodiest fights I've ever seen. That slow motion footage of the cut actually opening and the blood flying out was incredible. That was absolutely incredible. That's what high definition cameras are built for. Gruesome as shit. Thank God that cut was here on the side of his head and not here or above his eye because then it would have been stopped. At no point was Hoffa Garcia in any danger, not even for a half a second. This is another one of those fights I was very confident in. I got the line at minus 150. I think he ballooned up to minus, or sorry, I got a minus 120. I think he ballooned up to minus 150, but he opened as an underdog, which made no sense to me. Mahashete is long, tall. Obviously, he hits hard. He's a little dangerous. But Hoffa Garcia, people look at his, oh, you know, he just lost to Dracar Close. Dracar Close is nasty, and he got three takedowns in that fight. If he's taking down Dracar Close, who can actually wrestle, he was going to do this to Mahashete. So Hoffa Garcia, I've made money on him in the past. I bet him to beat Natan Levy as well. So I'm good with Hoffa Garcia. Continue the streak. I hope people continue to underestimate him. He's had some tough matchups. So, you know, he doesn't have the record that, people want him to have and he's not flashy comes forward good chin grapples nothing flashy but i'm all about hafa garcia he made me some money last night and that's how i got up those 2.6 units what a comeback this fight was what a comeback this fight was so i made money on this fight bet online if you don't know drops takedown prop bets 
you can do over a specific line, or you can just bet on who gets more takedowns in this fight. And I was hoping, and their lines are sharp, so it's not, some of them are tricky, but I was hoping people would see the Namaga Madoff last name and assume he was a wrestler. I don't think that's necessarily what happened because I think the odds were minus 350 for Saeed Yakub Kakramanov to get more takedowns. Should have been minus 900. There was not a world where Saeed Namagamadov was going to shoot takedowns. And if there's no takedowns or if it's even, you get a refund. So I did three full units on that. That cashed zero problems. No issues there. I was very positive. But what's shocking here is Namagamadov pulled it off. That was an all-time come from behind. Because we've seen come from behinds like Drew Dober where he was drilled, knocked down, almost put away, and then somehow got back up and then got the finish. I'm not talking about this fight. I'm talking about a couple months back. We've seen that before. But this was just total grappling domination. He was getting ragdolled, absolutely ragdolled. And then, I mean, that choke was deep. There was zero resistance. And unfortunately for Kakramanov, that's how that fight ended. But Kakramanov looked good. He was dominating I'm going to continue to bet on him. I only bet the takedowns here, not a money line. It was too even the call here for a money line. But good for Munamaga Madoff. If this shows us anything, it's that he doesn't quit and he finds ways to win. Yes, he was a little bit exposed in the grappling. You know, chin down and wrestle hard and you could beat Munamaga Madoff. But it shows you that he doesn't stress. He doesn't quit on himself. He will get taken down, get beat up, and he will continue to look for ways to win this fight. So... Both of these guys, awesome performance, phenomenal shape. Congrats to Naga Madoff for pulling it off. But Kakramanov, it is what it is. He got caught. And this isn't... I, if I'm going to get caught in a fight, I'd rather get caught in a submission like this than get knocked out and then caught or clipped, right? Because you don't, the chin doesn't always recover. This is no big deal, right? You're going to grapple. Every now and then you'll get snatched. And I don't think anybody looks at this fight and thinks less of Kakramanov because he was dominating here. Oh my God, dude. Jake Matthews, no fight IQ whatsoever. Permanent fade. It's just infuriating. He's tough. He's tough. I mean, he's not a quitter. He's tough. He got dropped, I think, three times. Continued to come forward. Continued to try to win this fight. But why the hell didn't you grapple? You are a wrestler. That's what you are. He found some power in his last fight. He's always been an okay striker, right? And he's starting to develop those skills. And this is what I hate about these guys. They find power, and that's all they want to do. And I get it. I get it. But the first time he was dropped, you want to start with your striking because you've had some success and you want to continue that? Fine. And this is MMA. Do all of the things. But after he was dropped in that first round, why in the hell did you come out in the second and not try to grapple? You were dropped again. Then you came out in the third. You think you learned your lesson? No. Of course not. Why would he have learned his lesson? He was dropped again. Like, that is infuriating to watch. I should have never had the confidence I had in Jake Matthews. And that's the problem here. Let's keep this in mind going forward. When we have a good grappler who gets a knockout, if we need them to grapple in the next matchup, let's fade. Let's fade. We've seen this before. We have seen this before. This is not a new issue. Miles Johns had this issue as well. So we've seen this before. I, I No longer am I making the mistake of trusting a grappler who had striking success to go back to his grappling. No longer Jake Matthews, permanent fade unless he's fighting a guy with zero power whatsoever. That was in, I was so mad. This is when I needed Doug Crosby. Where the hell was Doug Crosby for this decision? I could have, I could, a gift would have been nice. So freaking annoying that was. Anyway, holy shit, Drew Dober is here for a good time, but not a long time. He got pieced up. He got absolutely pieced up before landing that big boy power. He has insane power. We all talk about his chin, but people forget how insanely hard he hits. But there is no way this dude is going to have a long career. You cannot get pieced up the way he's constantly getting pieced up. Constantly. His last fight, I've never seen somebody take a harder overhand right in my entire life he just took it on the chin this fight okay bobby green doesn't have insane power but he still pieced him up he's still touching that chin over and over and over again and then drew lands the power that chin isn't going to last forever we should start to keep an eye on these matchups but drew dober i mean good for you holy crap that guy so much fun to watch 
He comes out there. He does what he needs to do. He wins these fights regardless of how many times or how hard he's getting hit. So definitely a Drew Dober fan. How could you not be? But we need to keep an eye on that chin. We just we just saw this with Tai Tuivasa. Relies on the chin. Relies on the chin. Relies on the chin. Eventually it starts to go and then it's gone. We're not there with Drew Dober yet. He has showed no chin weakness at all. But this isn't going to last forever. It just can't. Saw this coming. I was positive Armin Sarukian was going to dominate this fight. I was positive. Jacob, on the other hand, he's a huge Demir fan. He watched that Demir Garam fight and determined in that fight alone, Demir is going to be the champion. And Demir does have good wrestling, but it's good offensive wrestling. It is very different to get takedowns than it is to just defend relentless takedown after takedown and that's what Armin does he's relentless he will strike with you and as soon as you're comfortable striking he's going to go to the wrestling and he's relentless with it he's relentless with it he doesn't slow down or if he does you know he goes from 100 miles an hour down to 98 and he just will keep coming keep mixing it up work takedown after takedown I will say he needs to calm down on the ground because Armin doesn't settle in on the ground. If he settled in on the ground and worked a little bit more on his control, he would be the Islam. The problem is he gets the takedown, then he's immediately scrambling, immediately trying to take your back, and then that creates openings, and then his opponents can work up, right? Demir got up a few times here, but the reality is Armin Sarukian is the real deal. A lot of people think he won that Gamrot fight. I don't necessarily think he did, but... That's he's had two losses. One a super close, arguable decision loss to Gamera, and then one to the current champion. So Armin is the real deal. Demir is very good as well, but he's always this is always what that fight is gonna look like. Islam will do this to him, Armin will do this to him. Anybody that has that relentless wrestling style is going to do this to Demir. Striking is good, offensive wrestling is good. So unfortunately, Demir is always gonna be the bridesmaid and never be the bride because he's never gonna beat. These guys, these nasty nonstop wrestler guys. So Demir, it's going to be number two, number three, number four in the world for the foreseeable future until all of a sudden he pulls out some Benil Dariush level takedown defense. And then we got the main event. Sean Strickland lost at his own game. This was a Sean Strickland fight. Jab, 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 all day long. Jab, jab, jab. This was a Sean Strickland fight and he lost the fight. Granted. I, don't, I have no issues with the scoring. This fight was so freaking close. You cannot throw a temper tantrum at the judges' scorecards here. You can't. It was too close to throw a temper tantrum. There was no clear, oh, he won this round. What was the stat they said? Not one fighter had all three judges on any one round. So there was not a single round that everybody agreed on giving to somebody. And that's the you know th- that's what happens in these close fights. And there was nothing of significance. Nobody was dropped. Nobody was cracked especially hard. No real wrestling. So that's fine. I have no issues with this decision. And you guys are going to argue all day long in the comments section, calling each other idiots, doing that stupid ass clown emoji like that. All of a sudden makes you right. Go ahead and do that. But if if you're going to stand on a mountain and scream that somebody dominated this fight, you're out of your mind. That's not what happened. But this was a Sean Trickland fight. If he can't win this fight. He's, he's never going to be that title contender because this was perfect for him. No real power, tons of jabs. That is the fight that he is designed to win. The live odds were crazy. I think had Jared Cannonier, and I guess he ended up winning, but he was like minus a couple hundred at one point. Then it kept flipping. I don't know how anybody while watching the fight could have been that confident in either fighter. It was very very close the entire time. The numbers were almost identical. The pressure was almost identical. No real damage. Kind of a dud of a fight though, right? That kind of sucks to end the year on this main event. But they went out there, they fought, they threw hands, and that's all we were looking for. Either way, all in all, pretty decent card. I don't like the early ones per se, but pretty decent card. UFC 283 is stacked. UFC Vegas 67 is very good, and there's insane betting opportunities there. Don't forget, we're giving away $1,000. Just subscribe to both the channels you see on the screen, comment on the giveaway video, and you can win $1,000. It's that simple. The links to do all of that are in the description below. And become a premium member. I get it. There's not an event for a few weeks, but we have over 14 units of future bets. 14 units of bets on UFC 283 and other cards coming up. 
And UFC Vegas 67, we already have most of the picks up for that fight and bets up for that fight. All the odds haven't dropped, but we've got a very solid money line on that, a three-unit money line for one of the bets that have dropped. I have the safety parlay up. I don't have all the odds yet. As soon as the odds, I already know who's going to be in it, and I don't even care what the odds are. As soon as the odds drop, I will update that. So if you're already a premium member, make sure your Discord is linked so that you can get an alert to your phone because this is the time. People will be not paying attention, enjoying Christmas, enjoying the holidays, which is fine. Not me. I'm going to be refreshing those pages, keeping an eye out for those odds. And the very second that these odds are dropping, I will be pouncing on bets because this is when we're going to get the sharp lines. When people are distracted with the holidays and there's a break. So make sure your Discord is linked so that you will get an alert to your phone the very second that we're placing bets. The second that we do it, boom. You're going to get an alert on your phone, so make sure you link that Discord. If you're not a premium member, become one. It's only $10 a month. You'll get access to all the bets that are on the board now, and we're going to do live call-in shows. For these next couple of weeks, we're going to go live at our normal time and allow you to call in, go on camera if you want. If not, just do audio and ask us some questions, whatever the hell you want. Only premium members will be allowed to do that. We own picks.com at the top. Click become a member. And if you want to kick off your holidays or recover from the holidays with 50 bucks, just go to wewantpicks.com slash bets. Sign up with any one of our betting partners using our link and we'll send you 50 bucks. It's affiliate marketing. They pay us, we pay you. It's, it's very simple. Couldn't be more straightforward. Wewantpicks.com slash bets. Sign up, make a deposit. We will send you $50.